Italian, but I don't care. It's Sunday evening and it's 10 to 7. I'm about to go on the Truck and Hustle podcast in the US. Really excited about this, looking forward to it. After Truck and Hustle, I'm going to jump back on the emails, send the work list, and I'll be ready for Monday morning. Listen, Hustle fam, Hustle fam. We are back with another amazing show for you today. Listen, guys, today, Truck and Hustle is going international, baby. We are all the way on the other side of the world, other side of the planet somewhere. We going to London, the UK. I got my brother, Daniel Asheville, in the building. Daniel, welcome to Truck and Hustle. Thank you so much for joining us today, my brother. Thank you very much for having me. It's an honor. So, so listen, guys, if you've been under a rock, man, um, Daniel is doing some incredible things. Uh, he is an entrepreneur. He is the owner of Asheville Aggregates, right? And Asheville Concrete. Um, yep. you, also, you also do some property development as well, right? Yeah, that, that, that's Asheville Inc., Asheville INC, Incorporated. A bit of an American feel there. People always yeah. ask me if I'm from the States, yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, the Asheville Inc. And a content creator. This brother puts out some of the dopest, cleanest content on YouTube, man. It, it's... I implore you guys to go check out his page. If you haven't already, check out his content. You're going to be hooked immediately. So, Daniel, again, thank you so much for joining us today, man. You, you're our first international guest, man. So I'm extremely excited to have you on the show. Learn some things about, you know, your perspective and, and, yeah. and you know, just, just, just kind of talk and chop it up, my brother. Yes. Thank you so much. It's such an honor that I'm the first one. I'm sure I won't be the last. No, nah, definitely. You op you're opening the floodgates now. Yeah. The floodgates. <laughs> so, so you've actually been in business with Asheville, um, at, with your Asheville companies for the last yes. seven years? Oh, no, no. This, um, the whole Asheville journey started in around 2006. 2006? I, yeah. I, I started with construction. Okay. Okay, cool. So, so we're, we're going to get to that. So, so stop right there. We're I want to go through the whole entire journey. Let, let's kind of okay. bring the audience up to where you are current. So okay. you, you have a fleet of 35 vehicles, right? And, and, yes. and, and you got, you call them lorries, right? So yeah, we call, we, you call them trucks. We call we them call, lorries. We call them trucks. So he has a, a fleet of 35 vehicles. Um, Really, really dope equipment. And, and, and I want you to kind of break down in your own words what you do, because it's even hard for me to understand. When I watch <laughs> the page and, and, and I'm trying to figure it out, I'm like, man, this guy has all this equipment doing all these ex, you know, crazy things. Talk about it. Explain to the audience what it is that you do. Right. Um, I'll, start, I'll start with the trucks for you, okay. for, for, for the rest. I'll start with the trucks. Uh, right. we, have a, we have a mixed fleet of trucks. So um, we have grab lorries. Now a grab lorry is a, it's a lorry which has a crane on the back of it and it can go around and pick things up and put it in the back or it can deliver materials. We have those in two sizes. So we have an eight by four and we have a four by two. Then we have tipper lorries. A tipper lorry is a, much the same as a grab lorry but without the crane and it has a bigger body on the back. I think you guys call it a dump truck. Yep, a dump truck, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah. Dump truck. Yeah, so we've got dump trucks as well. Okay. Um, we've got um, uh, articulated lorries. So with the tractor unit on the front and then with the unit on the back. So we, the, the ones that I have, we have trailers on the back. So we carry material and we carry waste. We don't have like those large curtain cider ones. Um, we also have concrete lorries. Now, probably the concrete lorries that I think you've seen in the States are the ones with the bottle mixer on the back, the one that's yep. turning. Exactly. Yeah, we have, exactly. We're going with um, we're going with a different one. And the lorry was actually designed in Canada, not far from you. And it's come okay. all the way to me. And now I'm telling you about it. OK, so, cool. Um, cool. It, it's called a volumetric mixer. So what we basically do, we load the material, we load the cement and we load the water and we go to the site and we punch in on the computer and we mix it there and then. So we provide them so they could say, I want I don't know, six meters of this mix, and I want two meters of that mix. Okay. Um, we also have a lorry which pumps concrete. So uh, we have a lorry which pulls up. You can attach, um, you can attach uh, metal and rubber pipes to it, and that can pump concrete up to 325 meters. Uh, we also have a skip lorry, uh, skip truck, sorry. 
This, this is a term used in the UK. We have like these uh, metal bins in different sizes. So we drop them at people's houses, they fill them with waste and we collect them and, and take them away. Okay, okay. Yeah, gotcha. and I think, yeah, and I think, I think I, I struggle to keep up with it myself. But right, I think, right, 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 right. Yeah, I have, I have one that I don't have yet, but I did a video on YouTube about the other day. It's a, it's a one of a kind. Um, we're at a place where we're trying to do two new things. We've started to, um, I sell sand, stone, um, type one, sub-base materials. Uh, I sell them loose, but I've started to sell them in bags, bulk bags, which are a ton at a time. So we're pretty new to this okay. and we're moving into um, trying to, all of my machines, I want to get them from different sites. So it could be at the depot one day because we could have a train come in or it could be, I could want to move it to a demolition job. So we want to move them around. So we need a versatile truck. So we've got a one-off special, which has a crane and a hook loader in it. Like I, I've never seen one before, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, was, I was crazy enough to order one and right. um, I just gave sign off a bit the other day. So yeah, it's a, it's a one of a kind. It's a crazy cool bit of kit. All right, all right. So this is crazy. So listen, y'all, y'all have to definitely check out the YouTube and check out this fleet because this is like an assortment of vehicles and you have a, 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 a huge operation that's obviously evolved like over the years. You started yeah. off with, with, one, with one truck, right? And yeah, just started, started building it's, it's, from there. Yeah, it, it started off with um, one truck, which I used for my own construction company. So it started, um, so the construction company was running for a few years. Okay. Um, we were doing relatively well. So, and we started to, in London, there's this thing, in London, property prices are so expensive. People have decided to improve and not move. So, okay. but, so, so the people have decided everybody started doing the loft like what do you guys call it the attic like, or what like, like, like a like a duplex or like like a like so you basically would renovate and create another level on top of your yes okay so gotcha. everybody was doing that for a few years okay. but then they ran out of space so right. now we've started digging underneath and creating basements so we were doing a, a few basement jobs and i was calling other companies i say um i need i need them to come and take away the earth which has been excavated because I only have a limited amount of space outside. So when I'm digging, if the space outside is filled, we're in the basement and we can't dig anymore because we can't take it out. And when the, when the service was unreliable, it was slowing up the build. So I'm paying guys to stand around in the basement, smoking cigarettes and drinking coffee because <laughs> that's what I'm doing because they can't do any work. Right. So I said, I've had enough of this. So one day I just said, right, I've had enough of this. And I went to buy a truck myself. Okay. We didn't have any work. We just had our own work and I went and bought a truck myself and I decided, and I, I went and passed my test. I did all my exams and I, and I just used to drive this truck myself. Okay. So, and I only did our work. And um, when I had this truck, I realized to myself, hold on a minute, sand, stone, all these materials that I buy from these builders merchants, I can now go into a quarry. Why am I going to buy it from them? So I started going direct to wholesale. So I started supplying my, my construction company, you know, with materials and taking away the waste. But you know yourself in construction, it can change in an instant. So we went for a period where we didn't have any basement digs to do. So the lorry was kind of sat around and, you know, you need trucks out working. It breaks your heart to see a truck. If it's sat there, it's not earning money. It's not being used. So all the companies that I used to tender against, so we're both trying to win the job, I had all their details because there's a competition. So I went to them and I said, listen, I can't beat them on price, but I will be there when I say I will. Mm. You know, half the battle with business is just doing what you say you will. Customer so service. Kind of, yeah, so I kind of started to build up a reputation working on, on, on other people's jobs, so my competition. And it kind of grew from there. One lorry turned into two, turned into three, and... In the past, um, how can I? In the past seven years, the trucking side of the business has actually caught up and actually maybe surpassed the construction side of the business in in a really short period of time. Got you. Wow. So, so tell me, how did you get into construction to begin with? Because you know that wasn't your your kind of like your first path. So talk a little bit about coming up. Um, you know your, your your beginnings. Talk to us a little bit about that, so we get to know you a little bit. Okay. So. I went to university and I actually studied sports science. Okay. So I studied sports science and, and when I left university, I was doing a lot of strength and conditioning um, training. We have, a, we have a sport over here called cricket. I know about cricket. 
I know about, you know about cricket. So, yeah. so, so my, my, my father's from Antigua, right? So cricket okay. is huge in Antigua. My family is St. Lucian. St. Lu okay, so my mother's from St. Thomas. My father's okay, from okay. Antigua. So we, we might be related, man. We got to yeah, figure this out. You know, we could be. Ha half of my family are in England. We're, we're Watley. So, so okay. I'm Mel Watley. Most of my family is in England. They kind of split between um, the, the states in England. So okay. the, the Antiguan side, they're all in yeah. England. They're all in England. Okay, yep. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. But, but, but cricket. So so a lot of people don't so, know about so cricket. cricket. I know I, about I used, cricket. To, Go ahead. I used to do strength and conditioning training with cricket, with, with yeah. cricket players. Okay. I used to do strength and conditioning training with them. And at that time, um, I used to do some mod, some modeling as well when I, when I was a bit slimmer. Before, before the construction industry had taken it out of me, I used to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there was a, before the weight of the world was on my shoulders, there was a time, you know, there, there was a time when I could, when I could be in front of a camera. So, <laughs> so I did that for a while and I say, and I saved a lot of money and I started on, um, in the different sections of London, property is valued in, in certain areas. They're areas which aren't as desirable. So the properties are worth less. So okay. I'm from one side of London. Okay. I moved to the other side of London and okay. I bought a house um, for a lot cheaper than it would have been anywhere else. And okay. while I lived in it, I worked on it. So I, I brought in subcontractors. I did a loft conversion. Uh, I redecorated the house myself. I took my time. It took me like seven or eight months to do to do the house. Okay. And once okay. the house was done, um, I had the house revalued and I pulled money out of the house because it had gone up in value because the work I'd done. And then I bought another smaller one round the corner and I kind of made my way around in that area. It, it's not the most affluent of areas, but you can still add value to property. Got you. So okay. I did that a few times. And then what I did um, when with the subcontractors I was using, I kind of handpicked the core of Asheville. So there was a company and there was somebody disgruntled and he was really good. And I was like, a, it was like I hate it here. And I was like, look, man, like I'm looking to put something together. And I right. picked one guy from here, one guy from there, one guy from there. And I right. began to put together my dream team. Okay, okay. So, and then the work that I had done in those houses, I used them, I used the pictures and a bunch of stock images to make my first website. And I, 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 you got to tell the truth, yeah? Yeah, for sure, for sure. You got to tell the truth. I used a load of stock images and I created um, I, I created this website that like, and looking at this website, you'd think that we had a thousand employees and we were building skyscrapers. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Like they you say, you got, you got to fake it till you make it. That's what yeah, man. We, you, know, us, man. you know, like, I don't think anybody, at that point in time, I don't think anybody's really interested in the truth, you know? They, <laughs> So, right, right, right. So I put together a website and I kind of I kind of navigated my way in construction and through my knowledge in construction over the years, the, the business grew and I learned a lot and I was very hands-on in the beginning and then I began to step away. But I have basically I'm I'm fortunate enough that every job in my companies, I have done it myself at one point. Mm. So when I am around and I am in the office, any questions that are fired. I can always say right. Do this. Do, 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 do. We can. I, I can always firefight very quickly and make a decision and turn things around because I know what it is to do that job. Right. Is is one of the reasons why I drove and you know I can drive the rigid trucks and I can drive the articulated. I can drive all the machines because I understand what it's like to be a driver. Sometimes when you're trying to um, you're trying to map out drivers and you're trying to give them work to do. Unless you have physically driven yourself, yeah, you don't understand. Like you can't tell the man to go here and do this and go there and do that. It's not ha having an understanding of what it's like on the road and what it's like to drive a truck and how um, how you have to navigate around vulnerable road users and stuff like that. It um, it helped me and it, and it helps me on a on a on a basis of communicating with all my employees as well. And the fact that they know that I can do it as well. I think that they respect that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I got, so yeah. <laughs> so so so, how, how is entrepreneurship looked at? Um, you know, in, in in London, especially being a black man, like what, what what's how do people perceive you as an entrepreneur, and how important is entrepreneurship? Um, where where, where you're from? Um, entre entrepreneurship is is great where I'm from. I I to be honest, I think entrepreneurship is celebrated more in the states. Okay, and why do you say that? It, because you know, I see in the I, I see in the states um, 
Um, when people are doing well, they show other people and it inspires other people. Um, sometimes when you're here and people show, okay, I've done this and I've got this, that they, they call them like a show off or they say mm. it's not, it's not, it, it, I, it's viewed in a different way. Like in America, I see when someone's doing well, everyone celebrates them and, and they put it like, like here, if you're doing well, sometimes you have to, you have to think about your delivery of how you're going to tell people that. And you, Got you. Do, it's, it's, it's not, it's definitely people, um, they want that they, they do want people to succeed. And um, the love that I'm receiving from putting it out there, you, you, you say being a black man, it makes me very proud because um, the comments that I get on the YouTube and the DMs and I've had, believe it or not, I've had young um, black children say to me, they didn't know black people could be in construction. There you go. Right. You're, no, you're, you're opening up doors, opening up yeah, eyes. Yeah, man. I mean, like people say, until I saw you, I didn't know that that would happen. Like, yeah. I, I didn't know you could do that. And I messaged back and I say, of course, it's probably, everything's possible, man. You you just say, thank you for inspiring. Thank you for showing me it's possible. For me, that's that that's every, that that's everything. That's like the, that's like, I have to, when, when I get those messages, people will say, what's wrong with you? Oh, no, there's something in my eye. There's like, I'm not crying. There's something in my eye. <laughs> 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 it's all good, man. So I won't yeah. tell nobody. It's all good. <laughs> so, so what? What gave you? What gave you the 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 drive to to know that you could be an entrepreneur? I mean, especially like you said, it's not really celebrated because here it is kind of celebrated. Yeah. Um, especially now there's kind of a shift where you know everybody wants to be an entrepreneur because you know, especially because of the internet. Um, there's so much opportunity um, in the U.S. now, and everybody's looking towards op- entrepreneurship. Everybody's like, man, forget the nine to five, forget working for somebody, start your own thing. Thing. If that's not something that's really kind of pushed, um, you know, in London, like, wh- where'd you get that from? Where'd that come from in, in you? You know, it, it was just my passion. Construction was my passion. And I never, I don't know if this is a good or bad thing. I never really looked at the money element of it. I always looked at what I wanted to do this is what I want to do. This is the way I want to do it. Like I, I, I want people to look at something I've done and I, and, you know, I want to stand by it and I don't want to, you know, I, I never really thought of entrepreneurship as buying something for, for $1 and selling it for $2. Mm. It was, it was my passion. I, I wanted to create something and I wanted control of what I was creating. And, and I, you know, and, and I wanted a, I wanted a portfolio of it. So the way I saw it, I didn't really have an option. Got you. Got you. So what, what, when you first start got, in, got started in business, what was kind of like your, your approach? I mean, I, I know you said you saved up some money. Um, what, 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 like when just getting into it fresh in business, like, were you nervous? Like, how'd you just get started? Um, I, I was very nervous, but I was very nervous and I was buoyant and I made, I made some choices. Like I decided that if this is going to work, I had to make sacrifices you know, I had friends and they were doing other things. Like I remember, I can remember one of the first decent jobs I did. Uh, we converted someone's garage into an office. And I remember I made some money from it. And I thought, and I had an option. Uh, what should I do? Could I buy some clothes? And I remember I spent the money on creating these great leaflets. <laughs> right. And I went around posting them through right. people's letterboxes. You know, I was on people's porches and the lights were coming on. And they were like, what are you doing here? I'm so sorry. I'm just putting a leaflet through. Right. So, so th- that was kind of that was kind of my path. It was I just saw I, I threw everything at it, like everything, the kitchen sink. Like I just made I made sacrifices everywhere where I could. I mean, I sacrificed sleep. I was, a lot of I had a lot of people saying negative things about it as well. Like you need to enjoy your life while you're young. You need to do this. I, I just had the blinkers on. Mm. I was like that. I'm mm. focused. Right. That's it. Right. There, 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 there is no option. And, um, and, and I made it and I've taken a lot of big risks, which haven't all paid off. And, and I noticed that because even as you tell your story and the different types of equipment that you have and, 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 I, and I watch you on YouTube and it's like I see that you you just look at a piece of equipment and say, you know, what, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get one of those and we'll see how yeah. it works out. You, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, like what, what's, how, how do you, where do you get that from? What your, what's your approach to business as you build your business? Because it seems as though you add on to your business based on the need. You see like a new need and you're like, you know what? Let me, let me do this now. Let me try this now. Talk about that. that. Th- th- that's, that's exactly how I do it. You know, I try to, I know what I know and I just try to diversify the way I do it. So if I'm selling sand, 
in bulk, well, you know what? Let me sell sand in bags as well. Okay, I'll give you another example. We have, um, I have a, a grab lorry, a grab truck, which is an eight before. So yeah. there are plenty of jobs in in um, in central London, and they're on these really small cobble streets, and you, you can't get a large lorry in there. I was one of the first people in London to buy a baby grab lorry, which is half the size. And everyone said, what are you doing? You're mad. <laughs> and I was one of the first people to do it. And when right. it started, people are clocking on now, they're buying. I was one of the only one that had one. So people were calling this. They say, um, I need a baby grab to come to this job. And I'd be like, okay, this is the price. Oh, well, that's too expensive. Okay. Five minutes later. Okay. And because <laughs> no one else has got one. baby grab at? Right. Because nobody can yeah. fit. Yeah. So I, I always try, I always try to, I always try to look ahead. And the fact that I was, I'm in construction myself, I know what I want. So when I'm trying to win business or I'm trying to um, provide to one of my clients, I know what I want. So I'm calling the, I'm calling the director of that company and I'm having a conversation with him, construction director to construction director. It's right. not a sales call. Right. You know, I know what you need because I need the same thing. This is what I can do. You don't need to call anyone else. So I'm going to take away your waste. I'm going to provide your material. When you're finished, I'm going to supply your concrete. I'm going to pump the concrete for you as well. I'm going to give you everything you need. You do not need to call anyone else. Mm. That, 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 that's how the company continually evolves. Because if you call someone else for something, he is going to offer you something that I do. I can't have that. Right. So I have to wrap around you and I have to serve all your needs. I'm your one-stop shop. You don't need to stress. You don't need to have a problem. We'll look after you. That, that, that's just how I saw it. And that's how we continue to move forward and evolve. No doubt. You talked a little bit earlier about um, you, you, you hand-selected your team, right? Yes. And, and, and you started early doing it. How important is team to you? Because I see you always putting a spotlight on your team members. Talk, talk to me a little bit about that. You know, the, 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 team, the team is everything. You know, you cannot be everywhere at once, you know, and you need a team around you that je you can never expect them to do as much as you do, but you need a team around you that have a sense of, how can I say, they, they, they have a sense of honor. They have a sense of loyalty. Like they, they genuinely like working there. Mm. And one of the great thing my team like about working with me is I'm young and I don't have, there's no, there's no next in line to take over. A lot of companies in this industry, there's a, they're, they're either second or third generation. Okay. There's a father, there's a son or daughter, and they have a management structure. And when you come into this company, there's only so far you're going to go. Got you. Young, um, ambitious people who come to Asheville, like I always say to them, if you can evolve with a company and you can improve as the company grows, your responsibility will grow and you'll be rewarded accordingly. That that's, and the team is, a, YouTube videos wouldn't be possible if I didn't have a team behind me. None of that right. would be possible. Right, right. I, I, I'd be trying to do everyone else's, I'd be trying to do everyone else's job. So my team support me and they, you know, they continue to help the business grow. I'm always looking for new people, but the construction industry and especially a fast moving business with trucks and stuff, it's not for everyone. Right, that's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah, so it's so it's 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 not actually easy finding people. How many employees do you have now? Just under sixty. Under sixty. Yeah, okay. just under like 59, 58, 59. Now, are are the majority of those guys like operating the trucks, or are they like ad administrative, like a mix of? No, it's a complete mix. There's um there's guys who are based on site. We have uh, carpenters, we have electricians, we have plumbers we have foremen we have drivers we have machine operators we have administration staff in the office we have accounts we have salesmen we have there it's a it's a huge team that uh, construction project managers like everybody has a different role and the offices sit one on top of the other and everyone's up and down the stairs all day everyone's up and down the stairs we and, and even videographers we have on the same site okay okay so now, it, now how do you how do you manage all that from the top level do you have other managers under you that manage each of those departments? Yes, I do. But on certain instances, I have to step in. Okay. I, I have to, it, when it comes to a certain level, I have to step in. And some, and um, people, sometimes I have um, somebody in place who's meant to deal with something, 
but somebody like a driver could have been with me for a longer period of time and they've built a personal relationship with me. Right. So if they've managed to build a personal relationship with me, then I will continue, you know, I will continue to facilitate that relationship and I'll continue to, but I, I generally find that if I have an issue in the business or have something, communication is key. Mm. Like all my employees, no employee at Asheville is afraid to come and speak to me. And every single one of them, I, I see them every day. I might not have a 20 minute conversation with them, but right. I see them every, they know I'm around, they know I'm there, you know, and, and I, it's just a, a large part of what I do is also people management mm. and how I treat people. You know, people aren't going to go out and do their best for you if, if you treat them badly. Right. Right, right, for sure. Dig a, dig a little bit deeper into that. Like, like what, what are some of the other leadership skills that you need in order to run, run a company your size? Like you said, people management, that's important. What are some other skills? Um, you, have, you have to be dedicated and you, ha you have to lead by example. The people, I find, like when we, when we get stuck or we're behind sometimes, I'll, drum, I'll jump in a truck and the, when they see me in a truck, like the, the, the streets of London, everyone's up. So when they see me, the boys go crazy. They all start blowing the horns. They, everyone <laughs> wants to keep up with me. They right. want to know where I'm going. Yeah, right. like they want to drive in con. I'm saying, don't follow me. Go to your job. They want to drive in convoy. They, you know, it's, uh, it's like I, a parade. It's like a parade. Yeah, yeah. like, like I, I, I try to lead, I try to lead from the front. Okay. Like I, if, if, if we were pushing something, I'd be pushing as well and say, come and help me push. I wouldn't stand back and cross my arms and say, go and push that. Mm. I, I found that that's the best at the moment. That's the best way for me to, for me to do things. Got you. Do you ever get burnt out? Yeah. Sometimes I, sometimes I, 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 I do, I do crash. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll admit it to you. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I, I generally like when my staff are saying, are you okay? I'm saying, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. My head's completely gone. I need sleep. My eyes are stinging because I'm so tired. My whole body right. hurts. Yeah, I'm completely fine. I just I right. Try to so, 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 what, what do you do when, when you have that burnout? Because, like you said, man, you're running a huge company and you're also creating content. I, I can't understand how you do it, man. You must really be like around the clock, going, going, going. Yeah, you know I, what I mean, I, I, I am around. Yeah, I'm around the clock. But I will say the content, while it's given me a lot more work to do, it's given me a new lease on life. Like, I love it. Like, there's no way, like, when I'm working with my team, like yesterday, um, I was with um, my, the, the, creative, the creative guy in the team, Ara, and we were, we were sitting down. He was doing, the videographer had gone home, and Ara was doing the edit. We were there 11 o'clock at night. Right. And he was looking at me, and I was doing my best not to fall asleep. He's going, are you okay? Yeah, I'm like, fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Right. Uh, we were we were at work till eleven o'clock, falling asleep to make sure the video goes out. Right. When the video goes out, like I I, I love it. <laughs> I, I, seriously, I, I could tell, man, you're so passionate about it. What made you decide to want to create that kind of content? And 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 not only you you know what I love about your content is very explanatory. You take the time to describe everything. It's like you're you're teaching. You're not just showing your company. You're actually teaching people about what you do. What what made yeah. you decide to to do that? Um there's a little story behind it um i got i got a friend of mine who's a supercar customizer his name's yanni he he's huge on youtube he's got he's on like 1.7 million on youtube okay we're really close friends and um he always when people we used to go places and people used to ask what you do what do you do like what do you do and i used to give him an explanation and about five minutes in people would be falling asleep and he'd be like bro like like what are you telling them this big story for he said you've got a lot to say put it out there and I said, and I said, oh, nobody cares what I'm doing. Look how dirty I am. Look at my, people want, you know, I'm looking at Instagram. Right. People want to see, they want to see girls in bikinis. They want to see Lamborghinis. They want to, nobody wants to see me in, in the dirty yard, six o'clock in the morning. He said, bro, trust me, put it out there. Trust me and just see what happens. Mm. And I said, but I wouldn't want to just put it out there and say, I want to tell people what I'm doing. He said, perfect. And, you know, and then I met my creative team. And I just, and we spoke about a format and what I wanted to do. And I said, well, I believe it could work like this. And they said, right, let's give it a go. And from then it's just, it's taken off. I, I always want to explain to people what I'm, it, it's something, 
it's something that a lot of times in life people have been like, bro, like I'm falling asleep here. Like, <laughs> like I don't care about the concrete wall that you poured. Like, <laughs> it, it, it's actually meant the people in my personal life, I, like they, they have a break now. Like, cause yeah. I, don't, I don't feel the need to talk to the, you know, someone calls me, hey, what are you doing tonight? Well, do you know today at work, this wall I poured, they're like, what? <laughs> No, I got you. I got you. So if, if somebody is looking at your, your, your YouTube channel, checking out your content and they want to do what you do, right? They're like, man, this lifestyle looks like awesome. I would love to do this. I have a passion for construction. I, I, I love trucks. I, wh where would you tell them to start? What would be your advice to how to get started? Because you're a young guy, man. You know, like you said, typically you see somebody in this business, they're probably in their 60s or, you know, they've been doing it for a very long time to be able to yeah. grow to the level where you're at now. So how would you tell somebody to get started? Um, I'll tell you the way I get started. When, when, I, when I have a passion for something, I spend my time doing a lot of research. So when, when, I, when I thought about I'm going to get this truck, I got the, every now and then I get an idea and it makes me feel warm in my stomach. And, I, <laughs> okay. and that's when I know that's right. the idea. And I'm right. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That would be when I, that would be when I don't go to sleep. <laughs> and I'll be I'll be on the computer day and night, and and researching and asking people. The first point of call, I tell them to research it, and I I always tend to work with a plain piece of paper, and I do like a just a spider diagram. I write what I want to do, and I write okay. If I get this, I do it there, and then I can get my fuel here, and I can park here, and what do I need for it, and map it out before you do anything. Mm. just map out as much of it as you can and do as much research as you can and work to your strengths one of one of the great things for me while I'm because I, I, I wasn't born into this industry my strength might not be that I have a 20-year track record or my father didn't do it before me but I know about websites mm. I know about SEO mm. you know I know about this stuff so I'm going to work to my strength so this is what you do I've managed to put it together. I've bottled it. And now I'm going to take my strengths and I'm going to put my spin on what this is. And I'm going to take it from there. That that's how I look at everything. Like when I decided to do concrete, that, that's how, that's how I look at it. But it, it's key to do your research on your market, who the big players are, what they do, where they go. I've done, I've seen people like competition driving trucks. I, I follow the trucks. I want to know where he's going. <laughs> Right. Where, where's he taking that? Where did he get that from? Right. Oh, he's got nice sand, is he? I'm following him to the quarry. Oh, that's where you got the sand. Nice. Write it down on notepads. Mm, got you, got you. Tell me, tell me about a time when 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 a business uh evolution or a, a new idea didn't work. You you had an idea and you said, you know, I'm gonna do this, and and it didn't work out, and you said, oh, I should have done that. That that was a bad move. Tell me about uh, that time. It's within my construction business. Um, I, the construction business was growing. Uh, we were doing projects in the range of, I'd say, any project from twenty thousand pounds to two and a half million, three million pounds. Any anything within that range, and we were doing quite well. And I was very involved. And at that point, I personally, I was pricing all the jobs. So I would look at a job, I would go and see it. And I, and I price jobs in a different way. I'm not a quantity surveyor. So I go to the job, I have a look, I take my, my head of the build firm, I'd say, and I look at the job like this, right? It's gonna take this many guys, this long, and I need this much materials. My waste is this, my travel is this, my contingency is this, I wanna make this. And then I'd provide, I'd break it down and provide people with a quotation. But when you move up, to that next level and you're dealing with teams of consultants and architects and stuff like that you can't just give them a three page quotation broken down they mm. want a measured like i'm gonna need the walls are however many square meters and at that point i can't i i don't have the time and i didn't learn how to do it okay. so i took a leap to grow the construction company but i kind of lost control of it i lost the the essence of it because I employed a QS, I employed a, I employed a procurement manager. Okay. And the company did these big jobs and I had to employ loads of other people. And I was having to be everywhere at once. And it, and it didn't work for us. You know, it lost the personal touch. 
and the people pricing the jobs they they don't they're not pricing the job they're pricing the jobs from what they learn at school i'm pricing the job because i've built it so i'm pricing <laughs> it more i'm pricing it more accurately than the man who was at school for seven years because gotcha. i know what my team do i'm pricing it based on my workforce i know my i know my decorator is not painting this house in two weeks i don't care what that book says i right. know he's painting it in three weeks so right. i'm pricing it so the business and to that point it had been very good and and i had someone doing procurement so built buying my building materials but he's looking on google and he's making calls when i was buying the materials i was calling the place i was making deals i'm going to the counter hey listen man i've got another job coming you know i'm hustling right come on man the price of the timber here is too expensive and i'm hustling and i'm getting better prices right. but i kind of because the company the built the the build side of it grew so much i lost control and we weren't profitable mm. and and things started going under the radar and we did some large projects and then towards the end of the project people just they stopped paying us i didn't have the personal relationships with the clients or the consultants it was just done a just company to company paperwork to paperwork email to email stuff like that and we we sustained a, we sustained a lot of losses so i i had to i didn't i wouldn't say i scaled the company down i took back control of the company okay and i decided to get more involved again in the day-to-day -day running and how the jobs are priced and 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 i decided that i'm not going to take a job just because it's big i'm not going to take a job with someone who's a nightmare because so, this is a great advice in business someone who's a nightmare in the beginning is a nightmare in the middle and they're a nightmare at the end. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah, so that 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 is the probably the biggest mistake I made, and it and it was very costly. Got you. So you were just basically trying to grow the business. You were taking on you know more work than you were used to, and you were adding pieces to um, your business infrastructure that you probably didn't have before. Like you said, you had procurement people and people doing pricing, and you you you, you took away that personal touch, and that kind of ended up costing you in the end. Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work out. So you said you 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 scaled back. You took everything. You took everything back into your control. Now was this around the time when you started uh, when you first bought the truck, or was that like give me a time frame for for that? Uh, that that was pro that was probably around three like four years four 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 five years into the trucks. Four or five years into the trucks. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you were well into the trucks at this point. Yeah, well into the trucks. And the people who had been with me the longest in the construction firm, you have to, the people management, they saw I wasn't around and all they saw his trucks. So now in their head, I don't care about that. I don't care about construction anymore. All I want to do is, is run around in trucks. <laughs> uh. Got you, got you. I mean, you, you know, it's, it's crazy. Like be, being a young guy, when, you, when you're dealing with these people, um, you know, in th these large firms or whatever the case may be, what's their reaction to you when you when you enter these boardrooms and these meetings and 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 you walk in there and you're like, hey, you know, you start talking business. What's the reaction? Well, it's changed now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. But then, but then, talk about it. Then, um, you know, I, I I spent I realized people's reactions from a very long time ago, and I tell you, I actually. To, I started to try and overcompensate. So I began mm. to, I, I used to walk into people's houses. People used to see my website. I walk into their house to do building work and people were like, they, 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 they were taken back because um, you don't really expect to see me walk through the door. You know, that it's just, a, it's just the way the construction industry is in the UK. Right, right. So people with, with an open mind, once I began to speak and they realized that I know what I'm doing and they saw my portfolio and they looked at my references and stuff like that, it was fine, but it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't easy in the beginning. Mm -hmm. and, and I spent a lot of time, how can I say, I spent a lot of time uh, play acting. So I, I started to try to pronounce my words in a different way. I started trying to, I used to go to some people's houses and I would make sure I had a sweater on. So my arms were covered because I didn't want them to think that I was some sort of meathead. Right. Or, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I used to play the part and I used to go and I worked on how I pronounce my words and, and you, you know, I, I work to, to try to not, not to, not to change myself, but to be accepted into that industry. And right. then the longer that went by and the longer that went by, I've, and 
the more um, I built my portfolio, I thought to myself, do you know what? What am I doing? I'm just going to be me. And mm. it's only really when I began with the trucks that I really started to be like, do you know what? I don't need, I don't need to do this. Like, this is what I do. And I don't have to, you know, I don't have to play at anything. This is what right. I do. This is my business. This is what I'm capable of. Take it or leave it. Right, right. But, and when I started to do that, I did find that people were a bit, they, they were more responsive. Pe people began to, they began to take note. And the more, the more trucks were on the road, you know, a, bit, uh, a construction company, you don't know what they're doing. You don't know right. where they are. Right. Like, they, they, how do you know? You don't know how big they are. But when you're on the street and you see one, two, three, four, five trucks go past you and then you see another, people begin to take note. Yeah. You, they begin to take note and that's when they, I'd say, when they begin to um, take me more seriously. They, right. they begin to, you, you can tell when people take you more seriously because they begin to, uh, to um, inquire. Right, right. They begin to inquire. Like, um, like people, like salesmen would come and see me, truck salesmen, fuel salesmen, and they'd be like, oh, I was just with so-and-so and they were asking me about you. Mm. And I'd be like, what do you mean they were, they were asking? Like, what, what are you doing over there? What's going on? What are you like? Right. What do you mean, what am I like? Like, what, <laughs> like I'm, just, I'm a normal guy. Like, what am I like? <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. Do, do you ever recall losing an opportunity or at least feeling like you lost an opportunity because of who you were as opposed oh, to the work oh, that you plenty, provide? Plenty. plenty. Um, I, I remember I can, I can, I would say 70% of the time. 70% of the time. I'd say 70, not anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in the beginning. Yeah. In the beginning, yeah, seventy percent of the time. Wow. Yeah. Is so, there, so, is there anyone else like out there like that you can look to as like a mentor or somebody who's kind of walked in your shoes that you could kind of look to and say, hey, like, did you face these kind of roadblocks? Or are you kind of like trailblazing the way? No, I'm 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 coming through like a bull in a china shop with brute force. <laughs> I'm just I'm just. Uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just paving the way and adapting. I'm trying to pave the way. I'm trying to adapt. You know, I'm trying to. You know, I, I'm just I'm just trying to make it work. Like uh, my my mom always said to me, you know, where there's a way, there's a will. You know, so I just I, I don't have anyone to bounce ideas off. I don't. It, that's in construction. When when I began doing um, when I began with the trucks, I had more input with trucks because I had friends who already had trucks. Mm, gotcha. And I had an uncle in St. Lucia that had trucks when I was young. Okay. okay. So my, my mother used to take me to St. Lucia in the, in the school holidays because she didn't want me on the, on the estate, like running around, getting in trouble. So I asked to go to St. Lucia for the entire summer. And other than the, the mosquitoes, the size of cats, the, um, <laughs> being with my uncle, I used to go out with my uncle in his, in his, um, in his truck every day. Gotcha. I was out my, yeah. When he's fixing the truck, I'm not, um, I can't fix anything, but I know what spanner to hand him. I, right, I know, right, 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 yeah, right. Yeah, I know, I know, I know what cloth to give him. I know, I know what, so yeah, it's a, uh, trucks, I had more help. Construction so it, was more difficult. Is a trucking community a little bit more diverse in the UK? Um, yes, the, it's, it's a little bit more diverse. Yeah, it's, um, it's, there are many, there's um, English companies, there's uh, Irish, there's, um, a lot of people, Asian people, and then me. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. But I mean, when, when, I, when, I, when I say diverse, I'm specifically talking to black people also. Are there more black people in trucking? Like, talk about that. Like, in, 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 in the communities, like, you see a lot of black entrepreneurs buying trucks. I mean, in the U.S., it's, it's prevalent. No, I, you know, I don't, I don't see a lot of black entrepreneurs and I don't see a lot of um I don't see a lot of black people buying trucks in the UK hmm. I, it's, it's not something we see regularly it's not I, I'm, I'm not sure if that's just the way the industry is seen or people think I'm you see a lot of uh, black entrepreneurs do it doing other things there gotcha. are black people doing really well in the UK right but you don't often see them like in trucking why do you think that is I'm not sure I I, I guess it's just it's probably just perception. It, it's just it's it's just perception. A lot of the um, a lot of the large companies here, like who do truck, they have family names on 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 you know on on the side of it. There's a, right. 
you, yeah, you don't really see, you don't really see new companies coming up. Gotcha. There, there, there is who there is, and that's it. Gotcha. You, you don't normally see, it. and it's not something that, it's not something that's discussed. You know, when we're when we were at school, and you know, we're in the playground and stuff. Nobody's talking. No one's talking about trucks. You know, right? I'm, you know, you're not talking about. It. I'm, I, you know, I want, I want to be, with, I want to be signed to Diddy in the family. You know, I want, I want to be wearing a shiny suit. But, like, like, I don't, like, I don't want to be. I don't want to be digging any holes. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. I mean, and 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 the crazy thing is that's actually sad because there's a huge opportunity in in the trucking industry. Um, you know, I'm sure construction as well, but I mean, it's a shame that there's not more, you know, we would call them minorities or black people, you yeah. know, getting into the industry. Yeah, I, I would say there are, there are a lot of black people who are developers. Okay. Like they're, they're buying property, they're doing it up. There's a lot of black landlords here. There's a lot of black developers, but I'm talking ground roots construction. Mm. It, it's, it's, it's few and far between in, in my experience. Got you. Got you. So when you transitioned into the trucking aspect of your business or, 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 or the trucks, what, what, what shifts or what changes did you have to kind of make um, as far as biz, business wise? Like what, 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 what changed you? Cause I mean, you're used to doing the construction, but obviously yeah. starting to take on these trucks, it's, it's different. It's a different monster. So you, what were some changes? When, when I was, um, when I was doing just construction, I thought that I got up early and I thought that I worked hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh man. Yeah, I, I thought that yeah. I got up early and I thought, yeah, I put in a shift. Like, yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> when, when I started running trucks, I said, oh my gosh, like this is a different, you know. Yeah. When I was, I, I was I, I'm 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 waking up and I went to sleep half an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I I could what your your first truck was what? You said it was like a dump a dump truck or what what time it, of it truck was, was the a, first truck? It was truck? a grab truck. It was a, it was a grab truck. A grab truck. Okay, so what was the actual job you were doing? You were you were going grabbing sand and Yeah, I, I was going so I was I was I was going to jobs where we'd been excavating. Okay. I was loading the earth onto okay. the back and I was okay. going and I was tipping the earth where we take it. And okay. I was going to the quarries and they were loading me with sand. And then I was taking sand and stone and type one to my jobs and delivering them to my jobs. Now, the, the time, you know, I thought, yeah, yeah, that'll be all right. If, if, you're, if you're in construction, you can wake up at six o'clock in the morning. If right. you're trucking, right. you gotta be up, you got to be up minutes before five. Right. If you want to have something to eat. If you're not going to eat breakfast, then you can sleep till 5.15. Right. But if you, you want to have something to eat in the morning, you got to be up at minutes to five. You have to be in the depot. You have to turn your lorry on. You know, it gets really cold here like it does there. You need to warm up your truck. You need yeah. to do your checks. You might have a puncture, a flat tire. You could be pulling off the tire in the cold. You might have a bulb to change. You know, it's, it's it. I love it. Yeah. And it's, but it's, um, it, I, I find it very consuming. It, gotcha. it, it totally consumes you trucking. How how competitive was it when you first got started in, in, in the trucking? Um, like, because you said you had to get up early, right? So talk about how how competitive was it? It was it 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 was it was really competitive, but I um I managed to 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 have a great start to trucking because um all the everything I had learned about SEO, like search engine optimization and Google and everything, I designed this website. I mean, I love a website. I designed a website and I built the website around all my keywords. And okay. what I did was I held the website on the back end. I didn't launch it. And nobody in the industry at that point, because they didn't need it, they didn't have websites, like great websites, which followed keywords, which were coming up in searches. Right. And I had this website ready. And I, and I remember I went live and within a day, the phone started ringing. I went, why is it? I went onto Google and I was number one. Wow. <laughs> wow. I was that's number crazy. one. On that's crazy. Because nobody, now everybody knows what to do and everybody's copying it and everybody's revamped revamp their website. Right. But so much work came in. I didn't know what to do. See, people right. are calling me and they're saying, um, how many trucks have you got? I'm like, oh yeah, seven or eight or nine. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm. And, and seven or eight sat, or nine, you don't even know which which one. Pick one, know. right? I don't even know. And, I, <laughs> and I'm um and, and I'm driving around in one truck, 
using right. hotspots on a laptop to run the business with I've got a laptop on my lap on, right. and, and hotspots on my phone trying to trying to run the business like, like that so yeah that it, it was competitive and when everybody caught up it was some of the big boys what they did was the work I was winning because I was winning work because I was physically going there meeting the director of the company looking him in the whites of the eyes you know shake his hand giving him a price look I'm not going to let you down I'll be here when I say I will and I was winning work when the big boys saw that they just started to drop their prices mm. and with that I could I, I, I tell you one of one of them what they what it did to me this was a dirty one yeah, yeah. So they had a place where um, the excavated earth where I could tip it because you, you have to tip it at licensed places okay so what they did where I was tipping they just raised the price on me to more expensive than it was for me to take it from anyone. Mm. And then they went after all my work and dropped the price. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that was super dirty. Yeah, <laughs> was, they, they, did, they was, did me dirty. So, they, so what, what, what happened to you? Did you get, did you get kind of discarded? How'd you survive? Yeah, I got discarded. I had to find um, new places to go. I had to find new places and I had to adapt and I had to um, go to other clients and I had to go back to the people. But the problem is in big organizations like that, they, because they don't really care, they, they, would, they would promise the world and then they wouldn't deliver. Mm. So people would leave me and then a month later, I'd get a call. Can you cover one here? And I'm not a proud man. Like business is business. I want to say, no, no, you didn't use me. Now I'm not going to help you. Right, oh, right, right. No problem. No problem. Right. I'll do it. And then, uh, and then business began to come back to me because their businesses, while they had more than what I had, they're not efficient. So if I have a truck out, I want the truck to be doing five jobs a day. They've got a truck out doing three jobs a day because they're not fit. They don't know where the driver is. The driver's parking up. He's hiding. Like he's like, so, you know, so I was able to do a lot more but I had a lot less. Got you. So that's how I was able to try and win the work back and, and be, and be responsive. You know, a truck comes in the yard at half four and there's a problem with it. I would stay in the yard with the mechanic till 11 o'clock at night because I don't have another truck for that driver. But we say no matter what, right. the truck has to go out in the morning, no matter what. Mm. So there's been plenty of, plenty of long nights. <laughs> I could uh, imagine. What, what, when did you know it was time to, to start scaling up from that one from that one truck or that one lorry to the next? When did you make that decision to say, all right, time to start growing the fleet? Um, I made the decision when I could I could no longer keep up. I, I, I couldn't keep up and I didn't want to lose the client base I had. Okay. So so it was I need another one to service what I have. I need another one to service what I have. But it's it's a double edged sword. Because I've done it before, and then the work I was on, I lost that work. Right. And then I had trucks sitting around doing nothing. And then in hindsight, may maybe there are points when I got too excited too quickly. Mm. Mm. But you know, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty vision, isn't it? So <laughs> for sure, for sure. Do you, do you ever fe fear growing too fast? I I don't. Fear growing too fast. I fear growing too fast and the implications it has on cash flow. Mm, can you explain that? You know, you when you have when you have a lot when you when you have a lot going on and you have a lot of outgoings and you have clients that owe you big amounts of money, and then you soon feel it when they don't pay you. When when you're smaller and more mobile with smaller premises, smaller rent. You know, you can duck and dive and, and you can be a lot more responsive when you have a big three acre site and you're signed up to 10 years and you have lorries, which you're paying for monthly and five or six people who owe you big money decide they're not paying this month. There's not really a lot of places that you can run. Mm. You can't hide. You know, it's like it's like boxing. You get punched in the first minute and you've got another two minutes to hide. Like there's no <laughs> like you just have to, you know, right, you just, right. right. It's, it's just it's just the implications on cash flow. Got you. I, I, I worry about cash flow. How, how do how do your contracts work? Like, do you sign long term contracts like that, like 10 years or like, is this private? Is this government? Like, talk to me a little bit about how the work comes in. 
Un unfortunately, um, the the con. See, so we're not a quarry. We don't actually produce material. We merely supply it. So everything is week to week and day to day. You have your clients. So you have this many clients doing this, and you have that many clients doing that. And we have government infra infrastructure projects that we're working on, but we're not actually um, signed. So let's say they're building a new tunnel. They have the main construction company. They're the contractor. They're doing it. And they use whoever they want. So you could be going in there one day and the next day you're not going in there because somebody has undercut you. Mm, wow. So it's, yeah, it's very that's, that's cutthroat, man. So there's no oh, way to lock, lock anything in. Like there's no, there's no, no like, 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 like in the U S we have like government contracting, like they have what they call government set asides, right? Especially yeah. for minority owned businesses to yeah. where you can get a guaranteed contract for a certain amount of time. You know what I mean? Like, do you have anything like that in the UK? We, 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 we get something, we get purchase orders from, from clients. So they might give us an order for 8,000 tons of material. And then when I get that order, I know that we're doing that amount of material into them. So we can get an order for 10,000 tons of material or 12,000 tons of material, but 12,000 tons of material with a fleet of my size, that order doesn't go very far. Right. Right. So we, we, we don't as per se get like, right, you're on this job, you're doing this job and this job is going to be a year. We, we, this, we don't get that sort of, we don't get yep. that sort of stuff. So, so how do you like, like look, how do you forecast into the future? Like how do you project the, 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 your future projects? You know what I mean? Because you have such a day to day type of operation or week to week operation, and it's like, you know, that faucet could be turned off at any time. Like, how are you always constantly projecting what you're going to do next? I try to, I try to create, um, I try to see a niche and I try to supply that niche. So at the moment, we, uh, my depot, I've changed my depot and I bring trains into my depot. So trains come into my, my depot with material. Okay. And I'm thankfully located next to um, somewhere where they're building a new high speed railway. And then I've got Heathrow Airport on the other side. So me bringing in material by train, there's not, there's no one else around me who can do that. So this material is in another part of the country, which is a 10 hour drive. So mm. trucks aren't going to work. Right. So I tried to create a niche that if you want this material, you have to come here to get it. <laughs> right, right, right. That, 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 that's the only way you could, you could, you got to try to constantly evolve and think on your feet. That, that's really the only way. You just have to be creative, man. For the most you part, it's be, like, man, you have to, you have, you have to be creative and you have to be trying to think ahead and you have to constantly be, you can't sit on your hands. Well, this week we're busy. So I'm not going to go and talk to any people. I'm not going to try to speak to existing clients. I'm not going to try to build new relationships. No matter how busy you are, you have to keep talking. You have to keep trying to grow the business. You have, you know, you have to try to even the man who wants a, a hundred thousand tons and the man who wants two tons, you still need to give them, you know, you still need, but you need both of them because there will be a time when that hundred thousand tons is finished and the man with two tons, you're going to need, you know, you're going to need 50,000 of them. Right. 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 Now that's, 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 that's scary, man. You know, when I, when yeah. I sit back and kind of think about it, it's like, man, cause you have a, you have a lot of people that you employ, you have a huge, yeah. huge operation. So you have a lot of responsibility on your back, you know? Yeah. For sure, for sure. Talk to me about the, 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 the future of Asheville, man, because you've grown it to this point. What are you looking to do? Like, what's the next move for you? Hollywood, I want to be a movie star, no, manager. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood! <laughs> oh, I, uh, I, the next stage for Asheville is to continue doing what, continue doing what we're doing and continually diversify in what we're doing. And to, I still don't feel like I'm using what we have to its full potential. We have more vehicles ordered coming and we have, um, we're still here with COVID. We're still, we're in a lockdown at the moment. So- Right, you are going through COVID right now. Correct, yeah, correct. So we're, we're like, we're just like lockdown. we are. So I didn't even think about that, but get it. Yeah, so yeah. we're in a lockdown now. I'm gonna give you an example of how things that will stop you sleeping at night. I ordered a machine to offload the train. It's one of a kind. It's a 60 ton machine. It cost me a lot of money. I was waiting for it. It landed. 
when COVID started. Oh now, my gosh. Yeah, this machine needs to be working every single day to make money to pay for it. Yeah. Uh, we've had one train in the last 12 weeks. Wow. Wow. Now, thankfully, um, things are looking like they're picking up again. And we've had some orders come in and it's going to, you know, it's, things are going to, things are going to kick off again and it's going to, and it's going to start working. Yeah. But yeah. It's, uh, that, that's, that, that's crazy. How, how is the government reacting to COVID in, in the UK? Um, the government regarding construction, they've encouraged construction to continue. They haven't, they haven't put, um, they've advised people to stay at home but the construction industry is exempt. You know, we have to work in a different way. We have to work in a safer way. But the great thing about trucking is the trucks are out with one driver. He's isolated in a cab, you know? Right. right. He, he doesn't right. come into contact with anyone. Right. He gets True. out. He, yeah. He gets out to refuel in, in the depot. He gets loaded. He tips off. He gets back in the truck. So the trucks are continuing. It's, um, the, the, the construction work that's going to continue in this country is um, people who buy things which they want to create income-producing assets. Like they buy it, they want to do something to it, they want to keep hold of it, they want to rent it, that will continue. Government infrastructure will continue because it's needed. You still have to fix the roads, you still have to fix the electrical, you still have to fix um, uh, satellite television. But people who are buying to develop and sell on right away that has slowed down massively because there's no there, there's the, the sales market isn't you know when there's no confidence people don't people don't want to take a leap of faith when there's no confidence is you know it's like mass psychology it's if everybody says it's not a good time to buy then it's not a good time to buy got you Got you. What, well, as you know, we just now, uh, or we, as you may know, we just got a new president here in the U.S. I don't know how how much you follow. What is the perception of U.S. politics in the U.K.? I'm just, I'm just curious. Like, what, what do you guys see from from where you sit? Um, from where I'd say in the U.K. at the moment, ever they're they're very concerned with what's going on here. But what I do hear from the states, I hear a lot of um wild comments that your former president had made <laughs> right. like like those those make it across here like like some of the things that he said yeah like those like that makes the news here got you like got like you. what he said and, and like and you think how can that man say that like you know <laughs> the, the the these sort of things make it over here but i think the people in the uk they're um they're having their own um the way they're having their own problems with with our current leader and the, and every you know everybody has an opinion on how they think things should be done and us going into the second lockdown there's still a lot of uncertainty and there are a lot of businesses and people really struggling here like the hospitality industry restaurants hotels like they've come to their knees like there's there's people just you know they're just handing the keys back like gotcha. then there's, there's plenty of businesses here that just will not survive now, so, are, yeah, are, 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 are you guys going into another lockdown officially? Oh, we're in it now. Oh, you, you are in a second lockdown already. Yeah, we're in oh, a second wow. lockdown. We're in lockdown now. Yeah, we're in lockdown wow. right now. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we're trending towards that as well. Um, you know, because yeah. a, lo a lot of the other, you know, uh, countries and so forth and so on is locked down. France, I know they're in lockdown as mm -hmm. well. So, yeah, pr we'll probably be in a lockdown also here soon, too. Um, have you ever thought about getting into like uh, other forms of trucking, like um, like dry vans and like delivering like goods, like groceries and stuff like that? Just curious. I I, I have, I have, but I I think that I need to perfect what I'm doing first. Okay, okay. I'm the the problem with me is I'm like, have you ever seen a child in a toy shop that they don't know what they like? If you bring me somewhere where there's trucks, I'll just agree to something and then I'll work it out. I'll, yeah, I'll buy one of those, <laughs> and, and then and then I've got to think about like what I'm gonna. The, uh, I was um, with the truck manufacturer the other day and I saw, and I saw a, like a coach, like a, like, you know, like the Greyhound. Yeah. 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 I used to ride the Greyhound with my mom. I know the Greyhound and I okay. saw a black one and I said, <laughs> and, and, and these ideas started coming into my head. Right. Like, like right. And, I, and I thought to myself, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, 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 don't do it. Right. I'll do it. I'm, I'm going to try and focus on what I'm doing and, and perfect what I'm doing 
Right, right. Us, I got yeah. you. Do, do you have do you have any any friends who do like dry vans and stuff like that or, at all or not really? Pretty much yeah, everybody's no, no, in your no. industry. When you say dry van, that's the new. When so you... so a dry van would be like like a box, like a fit forty eight foot, like here in the U.S. like a forty eight foot or fifty three foot box is, or like a, a reefer trailer used just to deliver like groceries and 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 refrigerated goods, stuff like that. Everyday oh, yeah, like everyday that. household items and like and 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 and, and dry goods, people things that people you know buy off the internet and so forth and so on. General oh, free. Right. Yeah, we don't have we don't have the if the market for what I do is competitive, but the market for that. It's, it's super it's super competitive doing those small drop deliveries and a lot of the um the big supermarkets and stuff yeah they run their own trucks oh really okay yeah like the like the major supermarkets here they 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 like and the postal service here as well they do their own trucks like people mm. they don't leave it to for anyone to to get involved in that like the big the big ones like your uh your Sainsbury's and your Tesco and your, I think you guys have Walmart. Uh, like Walmart yeah, yeah, yeah. Walmart, Walmart. Walmart. Yeah. yeah. They, for sure. Here, the companies have taken control. They don't, they, they run it, they run it themselves completely. Got you. Got you. Okay. What, what do you do for um, like your, your, your personal development, personal discipline? Talk to me a little bit about your, your routines um, just as an entrepreneur. Um, what I always, no matter what, I always try to get up early. I try to get up early. I try to get some food into my stomach. And I try to, I try to, no matter how bad or low I feel, I try to be, you know, I, I try to be consistent. And when I'm going through stuff, I try not to take it out on other people, especially people, people who work for me. And I, I'm very, I'm very regimented in what I do. I try not to waste any time. Like when I'm in the car, I don't, I don't be listening to the radio. I've been making phone calls, pushing things forward, stuff like that. I try after work, like I, I begin to go like, um, have like a mind block, like around maybe 6.30, 7 p.m. I'll try to train, like do, do some sort of like weight training or something to just, and then I feel that after that and I have a shower, I feel like I get my second wind. Right. And I try to, and then I'll always do work before I go to bed, but I, I've had to try and set myself a rule because I'd be sending emails and then get in bed and, and wonder why I can't fall asleep in, within 10 minutes. <laughs> right, right, right. I, I, I have to, I, I've made a vow to try, I have to try and sleep more. It doesn't work, but um, I'm, I'm definitely trying to, trying to sleep more. Like and I'm, I am just, I'm just dedicated. Like I'm the whole time, like I'm even the smallest of problems. Like I have to, like I, I won't go to sleep without checking every email for that day. Like I can't <laughs> even email unread. I'll be tossing and turning in the night and stuff like that. So right, right. Do you do you have children? No, none. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm I, I'm I'm that guy. I'm I'm the favorite Godfather. Right. You know, yeah, just make him Godfather. <laughs> everybody's uncle. Everybody's yeah, Godfather. Yeah, everybody's right? uncle. <laughs> uncle Daniel's great, and I love having um Godchildren. Whether right. they like construction or don't, I'm bringing trucks. If you, I don't care what you like. If you, right. if you like Barbie, I'm bringing trucks. This is what <laughs> you're going to play with. <laughs> oh, man. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. All right, cool. So listen, man, we, we, we're going to start wrapping it up. This has been awesome. This has been really fun. Um, before we go, I always got to get two things. I got to get our final thought. You know, I got to give let you give the audience a final thought. It could be something spiritual. It could be business, entrepreneurship, whatever you want to. And then I got to just let, let you tell us where we can connect with you, where we can find you at on YouTube and so yeah. forth and so on. So start with where we can connect with you and then we'll end off with the final thought. Um, you can connect with me on Instagram. It's my name, uh, Daniel Louise. Um, you can connect with me. We have a, a page for the business as well. This is Asheville. Here's up there. Uh, we have a YouTube, which is also this is Asheville. Come and have a look at what we're doing there. And um, yeah, I think I think that about covers it. That's everything we've got there. No doubt. And let's get that final thought, man, for the Truck and Hustle family, man. T t leave us with something. Leave us with a jewel, a crown jewel from the I UK. Say, I want to say everything is possible everything mm, everything everything and, is possible and if i'm and if i'm not an example of that then i'm sure there are plenty of other examples but i just want to say guys everything is possible do not limit yourself and you know 
Um, losing doesn't make you a loser. I like that. I like that. And this man definitely exemplifies the fact that everything and anything is possible. Listen, Hustle fam, make sure y'all run over to YouTube right now. Go check out Asheville. This is Asheville. I'm telling you, it's an experience. The 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 content is so dope. It's clean. It's like a it's like you're watching like a movie or something, man. I mean, I, I love how you put everything together. Um, and listen, brother, I appreciate you so much for taking the time today to sit down with me. Um, you know, let us learn a little bit about your life. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Hopefully we can reconnect in like a year or something like that. And I've got more stories for you. And, you know, hopefully we can keep this going. I, I, I really appreciate it. I've got family in the States as well. Hopefully I can get all of them to watch this. So, yeah, thank you so much. For sure, let's do it. When I come to the to the UK, man, we got to connect. I got to come find my lost Watley family out there in yeah. the UK. You, you know when you come guy. to the UK, that's a YouTube video right there when you come to the UK. <laughs> that's a fact, that's a fact, man. Listen, Daniel, man, appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, thank you. Take care. All right, all right, take care, brother. Thanks.